All right, Call of Duty fans, what a day it has been so far. It's time to keep up the ac action. Let's get our second series underway. With that being said, it's time to bring out the best boys in the business. I give to you, Toronto Ultra. With what looks like a stacked team, we already know what the deal is. I'm not the best on this roster, but who is your player to watch? I can't wait to watch Cami. Last year, he had a crazy season the entire year. I know he's going to do it again. He's such a flashy, fun player. He's going to pop a lot of three pieces, and I can't wait to watch him. Blaze, this is Toronto's first time on the main stage in 2022, but who are they ready to take on, man? All right, Toronto's ready to showcase their teamwork on this stage, but the squad they got to go up against, well, they don't, they, don't, they don't care what they ready to do. <laughs> I give to you the Florida Mutineers. Show some love for Awakening, Dave, Patty, Skies, and Vivid. That's the Mutineers. Big Wake joining the lobby once again. <laughs> I'm ready to see the pop-ups go down. Ali. Who do you like on this roster? Who do you think is going to have a big impact? Oh, my, across the board, man. Honestly, I talked about Vivid a lot yesterday. I loved his positioning throughout the series. Even though he didn't put, put up big numbers, the route man certainly got paid duty, filled the holes for his team. And again, Dave Patty in that meeting, our position, he clearly played lights out yesterday. And I'm just so interested, interested to see what he'll do today against a team like Toronto Ultra. Blaze, we're tired of waiting, man. Let's go ahead and get this thing started. All right, let's get it started, because as we know, anything is possible today. And with the best fans in the world in this venue making all this noise, you guys are in for a great series. Let's get this second one kicked off. All right, welcome back to the desk of Nameless. I talked to Ali about it. I spoke to Slack about it. But who is going to be your player to watch on both of these teams? Well, I'll be looking at Big Wake. I mean, we saw him <laughs> going off yesterday. I've been able to call him Big Wake in quite some time because of how his performance was the latter half of last season. I'm looking at him today to continue what he was doing yesterday, man. This kid is a force to be reckoned with. When he burst onto the scene, he was frying everybody. His awareness was level 99. I need to see it once again today. Yeah, now Slack. All right, both of these teams, man, I mean, is there a clear-cut winner? I mean, Toronto Ultra, looking at what they did last year, I mean, they, they, they clapped, right? I'll be honest. Based on what I saw in the last series, Atlanta FaZe kind of came out out of the gates hot, right? But then they slowed down throughout the series. I think... It's a new year. It's a new year, We're right? We're going to see Toronto going. I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, I'm liking this Florida team I saw yesterday. I expect big things out of them again today. All right, Ali, what's on your mind, girl? I, dude, I'm just excited to see Toronto Ultra. I've seen literally <laughs> nothing from them, literally nothing, except maybe like a handful of scrim stats, right? So like now it's just a big question mark of, are they frying at this game? According to most coach power rankings, they're still top two, top four. So yeah. I'm just interested to see if they're gonna perform that way as well here today. The biggest thing to look out for in this matchup oh. has to be Insight versus Dave Patty. Like Dave Patty yesterday, he had a great performance in his first series, but he's going up against Insight, who can be extremely annoying to play against. Like the guy's shot is incredible. He plays those annoying spots. You saw the spots he taught us last year. Like Raid has been out for 10 years. He taught us the tree spot. So like Dave Patty, he has his work cut out for him. It's a big dog he's going up against. All right, so now let's go ahead and do predictions. Now for you, do you think that Florida Mutineers is going to run away with this and have a repeat of yesterday, or do you think Toronto is going to show the role what they're all about, Slack? Um, I think we're going to see the consistency from Florida, actually, here. Toronto, like I said, okay. has I like played it. this weekend so far. I like what I saw out of Florida. I like their comfortability in the new roles. I love seeing Awakening Fry and perform. I'm going Florida here 3-1. All right, Florida 3-1. Alec, do you oh, think the man. team playing the individuality is going to step up big time against Toronto Ultra? Oh, yeah, I, I have Florida taking this. I actually literally DM'd my group chat today and was like, I'm changing my pick. I'm going in after day one. I 100% think Florida's going to win this. Nameless, you a better man, yo. When it comes to your pick for this matchup, who you got all your money on? Uh, they're off the Pine Park. I think that <laughs> I think Toronto Ultra is going to win this match. Their teamwork is on another level. I saw them. There was a picture of them all laying down, taking a nap in their Zen moment. Like, Toronto <laughs> Ultra, that's a team's team right there. They're going to go in and win this 3-0. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. Let's go ahead and send this over to 
Mouse and Chance, fellas. Let's see if this one is going to bang just like last series. Take it away. It's nothing but bangers here so far. Kickoff Classic has not disappointed yet. I mean, face fans probably a little disappointed, but I think this venue's cursed for them, surely. Back to back. Anyway, I digress. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be an absolute treat. Hiya. Let's get on with this one. A lot of fun to be had ahead of us. Florida Mutineers, consistency may be the key for them, but Chance Ultra, they're our second place, you know, I don't know what to call them, like, good team coming into this one. I, I, yeah, so, like, second overall in the power ranking. Surely based on last year, but FaZe was number one, did not pan out for him. So there's really no telling. And for Toronto, I have heard every rumor under the sun that they look fantastic, teamwork's on point, that they are not having success. I've heard Insight is still one of the best ARs. I've heard he's struggling. I have no idea where to go with this. And similar from Ali, haven't heard anything from scrims. It is undeniable that I don't think anyone has any idea how the series is going to play out. We'll find out. The series you speak of here on your screen, give you to Hardpoint our first Berlin, Search and Destroy map number two, and Tuscan Control will run out our third Berlin. And of course, there's a siege for the final map there. Going to be a lot of fun. Again, there's a siege, snipes, fun games, all good here. Vanguard has delivered as chaotic and as fast paced as you like. But the Voodoo Chance, a much bigger map, you know, long range. We talk about those AR plays being very dominant here. We have to be leaning somewhat towards the boys of Toronto to Ultra based on what the desk has been saying, but there's some new kids in town. Yeah, hey, but can we though? Like at the same time, like Florida, that's a team that like has the three ARs on the squad. So honestly, insanely difficult to predict and something that will be interesting at least a little bit later on, that Berlin SD. I mean, this is very early in the year, but we actually saw Florida play that map yesterday. On offense, it was an A hit every single time. Toronto, a team that obviously does their homework, but Toronto also a team that has the best teamwork arguably in the league. But teamwork looks a little bit different this year. Here we go. Into the reigning of Utu for our first hard point. And already you've got Toronto Ultra in point. And it's your boy Benjamin Bantz finding the two pieces up there. But those barrels are a deadly addition to the game. And they do tend to uh, eliminate whoever's nearby. That being said, we still have Ultra in the lead. And thinking across the map, already looking towards that P2. That's where those players towards the bottom side of the mini map are already battling. Insight in your screen. Potential rookie of the year here in the CDL. Didn't necessarily walk away with the award here in this very arena the other night. But he's looking fine so far here on Vanguard. Hey, and this is a great way to play it as well, right? Insight just playing around the information, staying safe away from the maze. He can play inside, and now he's on a four spree, getting fed by his teammates. Admittedly, maybe not a ton of time they're able to collect, but the hill effectively has been perfect. Woo! Even gets the one-on-one -on -one inside the hill. For insight, it does not get better. And even on that rotation, well, Toronto, they're going to be set up at least earlier on towards this new hill. Skies took a tumble somehow, some way. Kleenex finds to Toronto. The rotation is perfect. All good. Over towards the point we go. Plenty of time for them. And insight, keeping the spree alive. You know, I walked past him backstage yesterday and said, hey, man, how you doing? How you, how you feeling about the game? He goes, oh, I'm not very good at this game. I'm a bit shit. And I was like, well, I don't know, mate. You're on a six spree. So let's get with it. The hard point time still ticking their way. Mutineers have yet to get involved. And this is just perfectly controlled. No one's overextending. They're playing it so well. Insight has been a statue. Oh! Vance has been Muhammad Ali, and now he's pushing out the spawns. He's going to be flanking too, potentially, right after he gets the calls out from Insight. I don't believe Insight connected with at least the glide bomb. Woo! But Benjamin Vance connects with the two, and look at the score line and the rotation as well. Toronto, this has been perfection. Yep, close like a butterfly, stings like a Benny B, and now we still have hard point going the way of Ultra. Rotation now going down. Mutant is, they're going to be in position to make something happen here. David flying forward as we go over towards the amphibious little land. And, uh, that's going to be an open hard point for now. Both teams are going to contest at range. First in, best dressed Florida Mutineers. How long can they hold it? Oh my word, Cami right off the top. An easy kill for him. Inside at range, takes care of Sky. Up to date now, what's he going to do? And the answer is nothing. It's another five here for Kleenex. And this has been picturesque. You can't get this six, but everything Toronto has done. This is textbook of how you want to play Kabutu hardpoint. Again, every rotation on point. They're not being hyper aggressive. This is controlled gameplay. An insight, eight kills already. He's got the coverage around the point, and this is the teamwork that we were expecting from Toronto Ultra. They have picked up right from where they left off, and now the question is for me is, how are they going to approach this break on the Money Hill? They got three players right now trying to push through P1. Map control going the way of Florida Mutineers for the next hard point. Toronto, though, a team lauded for their brilliant teamwork and communication. Well, let's let them do the talking for themselves. Go for quick listen in. Toronto Ultra. Yeah, right up here. Awaken inside the truck. Awaken Take our time here. James yeah, got quick. streaks. Yeah, I have a streak. I'll try and get a kill here. Yeah, go, go. Nate top, Nate top, to the right side. He'll be yeah, near the right I'm side. Yeah, I'm doing it now. Quick at it. Did you buy me? I didn't hear him. Wait, I'll hit the right fucking. Okay, wait, wait, wait. Yep. 
I'm just blocking cliff still. Wait, it's top, top, top hill, top hill, top hill. Oh, top hill. 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 Gonna be behind us, bro. That, 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 nice, good cool. chip. You I'm still blocking right? Uh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Nice, guys up top, guys up top. You back then? Yeah, left side, left side, time, top, left side, time, top. Paddy, we yeah, got the left side, Jim. Nice, nice, nice. Put you on time. He's a weak guy, good luck. Yeah, on left, on left, away from him. Go new, go new, go new, go new. Go new. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, he's mid. I just want, I just want to One shot, one shot, one shot, one shot, boat, one shot, boat. I'm waking on old. You got a streak? Yeah, I've got a streak. Let's play this old, someone go left. It's already left, bro. Already left. Right oh, side top yeah. Already nice. left. Top ring, top ring. And one top top, boat, top, boat, top I spun out. I spun, bro. I hey, spun out. Wait, he was on the right, bro. Look for him, man. He's still top three now. Or all top boat now. He's top boat, bro. Yeah, top boat, should I Give him yeah. me. Vivid, absolutely. Top 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 gobble, 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 absolutely. Okay, yeah. Then, watch Cliff, 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 awakening. Cliff, oh, awakening. Go on top boat, go on top boat. I'll see him. No, no, that fuck is shit. Nice, nice, that's two. I almost left, one in time. He's in the mid box sometime. Need him, need him on the mid box. The mid box is one top ring. S2 tank, S2 tank. Oh, oh top e five, bro. Top e five, that panic. Clean comms in a developing lead now here for Toronto Ultra and Chance. The crowd couldn't hear it, but tell them how good it sounded. I mean, it was absolutely textbook communication. They're also out here teaching, right? You hear the comms when they're trying to break that hill. They say, Ensign, are you blocking it? You can block those spawns from P1. It is like a line side block. If you're actually looking at the spawn location, it will force them to spawn behind you. If you ever look away, well, they get a spawn right in the back. So Toronto, they certainly know how to play this game. And again, everything so far has pretty much just been picturesque. You couldn't ask for anything more. Yep, all good so far. The band's 15 and 11 now on a three spree. Back over towards the first hard point we go. And again, it's back into the rotation. Doing what they possibly can now is Dave Paddy on the far back side of the map. Phoenix cuts him off, catches a big wake as well. Can he find Skies? No. Big shots there, but still hard point hands in for Toronto Ultra. A few players now making their way in through the center of the map, coming from Florida Mutineers, but Bance once again, clean reads. Can he take care of big wake as well for the fifth? as the teamwork so far flowing right now, and Dave Batty from the top rope trying to push Bans back, but it is just enough, as he will take him down. The pressure still mounting chance, but you've got a solid hold here still from Ultra. I, I mean, I'm just waiting for Florida to force any sort of pressure on in Toronto. It is seemingly just every perspective we see from an Ultra player, casual, just pre-aiming, waiting for the gunfights to come to them. The double challenge is on point, and I think really they are just taking Florida to task. The teamwork has genuinely just been that good. A clean and easy game for Toronto thus far, but as it stands, the exact same situation just about on this rotation over towards P2. Cam, he gets top boat first, and he gets flanked, and look at the comms. His teammates feed him the information, and they just add to everything. Finally, Vivid able to pick up two, and it looks like Florida actually managed to get to P2 first. Maybe a, a moment, a respite, a breath of life for them to try to get back into this game, but as it stands now, down by 90 seconds. Couple of sweet kills though, helping them out. Awakening can't quite catch the other one. There's one more invader on the outside of the boat. There's gonna be Awakening, oh sorry, Insight, trying to make his way up top now. Vivid with a good line and the bad timing. Here he comes. Catches him out. Another one up top. Vivid wins the second. Great job out of Vivid holding on to the spree there for a few moments. That was a five. Gives his team a nice bit of time, but Kleenex, the great Dane now, trying to make his approach through the bottom side of the boat. Awakening once again from the top side of green. He's going to find those kills as well. It's good work out of the mutineers. Pulling this one back slowly but surely. And after that, clean four down, right? Well, the main thing you have to do for Florida is worry about that rotation. Bands, I mean, he might not know it, but he can just fly on through, but Dave Batty actually is there to watch the cross. So Florida not letting anything slip by. We talked about how perfect Ultra has been pretty much throughout Ooh. this entire game, but Dave Patty winning another big one-on-one. -on -one. They were down by 90, but now you got a five spree. Now you got the clearance on the hill. You're pushed out P1, and even look at number eight. They have cut off the middle of the map. All their base is covered. This is set up for a perfect full 60. Let's see how it goes, though. Pressure now on Dave Patty. Top mid cleaned up. Still hard point going the way the mutant is. Will it be a full 60? Let's find out. Ben Bance, he and Kleenex now approaching the hard point. Awakening. Potential cut of kills here. His teammates, they're finding them, though. Awakening finds one up top. Cammy though, from the backside, a nice two-piece for him. Into the hard point he goes. No, Awakening shuts it down once again. Can Bounce take care of Awakening? That's hard point. No! Awakening once again finding those kills. He's holding it down now, keeping the mutineers with a foothold here on the beach. An interesting spot, by the way, as well. You actually flip those spawns, so you don't get the full 60, which isn't great, but if Toronto Ultra is spawning on the right side of the map, at least that grants you that rotation. Now, the first go around Florida, they did get the full setup, and it was about 30 seconds before Toronto found the break. Obviously, with this situation in Florida, they cannot afford to have the same thing happen again. They need to win these gunfights on P1. Number seven on the minimap, Dave Patty. He needs to keep control of that boat. You cannot let these players pass. You need all of this hill time. Skies in the hill. Dave Patty. 
current captain of the ship, trying to hold these players down. Oh, Benz has managed to slip through. There it is, the damage already done. He's made it in. Can he find any more on the back line here? Vivid's up next, does win it on the backside. So, safe as you like. Cami and Co now making their way through the beaches as they storm forward. Can they find anything? Sky's up first. There's the shots as Cami gets much closer, but the pinch is there. Good work, Mutineers. Good comms. Holding the point down still. Vance from the back line can't get anything done. It's four dead. As you can see, the spawns, though, as tight as you like. And look how close they are to the hard point. Ultra, this is your opportunity to get in there, but you have to slow down the hold here for the Mutineers. It's been ideal. One player left, and then you should be able to call it quits. Spawns is still there in Toronto. As many kills as they've got. What a battle and how long it took to get in that point. I mean, we heard in the comms, they taught how to break this hill. They just do the exact same thing again. Someone was able to break through. I think it was Vance on the cliff side. Unacceptable from Florida. You have to make sure you pick up that side of the map. And as soon as they block those spawns and then secure them for the back, the break is that much easier. I mean, that is two back-to-back -back money hills that Florida just could not handle. Now the situation they are in is that much more difficult. Such a long way to go, but at the same time, you can also lock this hill down for a full 60. If Toronto were spawning on the bottom left, it is not fun to have to flood through. Awakening, watching the cut. Number five, Vivid, doing the exact same thing. And Skies, he gets to post up. This is an incredibly difficult hill to break, flooding through the front. Trying to flood through the front still. Inside, Vance Kami kills all around. Insight's going to find himself three in a row, and that could be enough. It may be enough to get on the point indeed, as Ultra finally managed to get themselves that bit closer to the win here. As Insight's three-piece comes to a close, the hard oh, point wow. is all theirs. Benz, I mean, he just goes and picks up three. It's so tough to get inside. They use the streaks just for that small opening. They find all the kills. Toronto, every single hill that they need to break, they get the job done. The stamp on the game. Map number one for Toronto, and I got to say, they made it look easy. At times, it was a little shaky. They took their sweet few moments getting in hard points. The breaks weren't as clean as you'd like at moments. But hey, man, it has to be said, a team with such brilliant teamwork that we gave so much praise to in that 2021 season, it seems they've started things off in the right way, Charles. I, I mean, really, that game, I, I think for what the, the first half, Toronto Ultra basically didn't deal with any sort of pressure, built up a very nice lead. And then the second half was almost the opposite story. They had to deal with the pressure, dealing with the breaks, three hills back to back to back. And well, every single time they're able to get through so that answers a big question for me how good is their teamwork gonna be that was completely on point they have not lost a step i think the only step we could say they possibly lost again this is kudos more to the mutineers that the slaying compartment they really picked things up in the second half of the map more kills for them as we look across the stats here a bit of a slow one from skies at 15 and 26. i think that insight as well he started things off really really hot it was a nice spree for him six seven and oh and at the end 23 and 17 for him big work all around and, and even looking at just those non-traded kills right most players in the lobby and this is been typical are very close to their total kills the non-traded right around that same ballpark skies though only eight non-traded for the 15 total kills so half the time he's getting one immediately getting killed straight after so a bit of a, a low impact game but also the hill time it is worth pointing out inside i think he was like the the super sponge inside the actual hill he just collected two minutes and 18 seconds so that's what you want from toronto get that main ar inside the hill let him just be the laser beam and everybody else gets to clean house again just a I mean, perfection from a yeah. game number one. That hill kitten was purring indeed. Look at the highlights now from that opening match here on Gavutu. Why are you shaking your head? I think it's a lovely term as Toronto Ultra will take the lead here in this series. But it's no plenty to be uh, seen from them still. We've got a long series ahead of us. And again, if you have just joined us, it is a single elimination tourney. So it's a best of five. When you lose, you go home. And we don't want that. A lot of the fans here in the crowd. We know there's a lot of Mutineers fans. We heard you at the start. You guys are real loud. Except for then, that's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> drop the ball on that one, I gotta say. Maybe the, the tough map one is gonna be a, a little bit draining, but just highlights from this one, again, clinical effort. But I will say that Berlin s and we are going to next is incredibly interesting because Florida had a situation where they were like two and seven in the first blood, so they could not find the opening kills and then won the game 6-3. I mean, they just bullied out the A site on offense every single round, and it'll be interesting to see if that like plays into the mind games, right? Is that gonna be Toronto makes the adjustment? Are they gonna go for heavy stacks? And also, I think in terms of like creativity and search and destroy, maybe a handful of rounds, five or six, where the smokes are getting utilized like effectively by some of the teams. Toronto may very well be the case of every single round. They might have just uh, a bag of tricks that they are going to be using.
certainly one of the most creative teams we had last year in Cold War. Yeah, Berlin Search and Destroy coming up next. Of course, we saw the Florida Meteors play the LAG yesterday, and it was a 6-3 victory for them. A lot of love towards the A-bomb site there, but chances you said a lot of love towards the cuts as well. So good looking gameplay from them. We'll see if they can repeat that against one of our more cerebral teams here in the form of Toronto Ultra. Tusky Control as well. Excited to see how that one goes. There's some great control games already. It's uh, it's been a hot topic here when it comes to Vanguard. I mean, yeah, the, the interesting about thing about control this year is it seems like almost every single round is going to play out the exact same way. Like a minimal amount of variation of what you're actually allowed to do on the offensive rounds in both these maps are fairly defensive sided. I want to watch Toronto play because they would be one of the very first teams to sort of figure out the game mode, break it down. And with the limited amount of time that these pros have had on these maps, Toronto Ultra potentially may have been ahead, but Looking at insight, Jamie Craven from the last season. I mean, balling out in search and destroy. The first game he had on Miami, he's breaking records. So he had quite the introduction. And of course, the respawn, not too shabby either. And I think his KD, honestly, from game number one, roughly the same with all of the hill time to back it up. It really was a standout season from the young rookie. His debut in the Call of Duty League shook the foundations itself. And a second place finish at playoffs as well and at champs. It was one hell of a show. And if you were there, you know what we're talking about. Truly crazy but again the opportunity to right the wrongs of last year and they're already off to a better start than their rivals atlanta phase but they have to get through florida first i mean if i remember correctly atlanta phase one map one a fairly <laughs> fashion and it didn't go too well after that <laughs> so there is a lot of call of duty left to play and again it, it is almost impossible to predict most of these teams at the moment i all the evidence we have seen just an hour ago but Berlin, I will say it again. We watched Florida play it yesterday. I'm very interested in to see how Toronto responds or if they just try to play their game and go for more standard setups on defense. But I am expecting Ultra uh, to be very keen on utilizing the smokes, potentially more than any other team. Let's see how they go. Ultra AF has been the hashtag for the longest of time. Let's see if they can bring it in game right now and push the lead to 2-0. The comeback could be on for Florida Mutineers. Here we go. Over towards the A-bomb site, as Florida loves to do, is it an easy read from Ultra? They've sent two players on the alley side on the defense, playing that little slow bend bounce to the cuts now. Timing not so good. Awakening first blood. Oh, they just sat there and waited for it. That was the trap. And here's the bait for the trades on Insight. Insight with the snapper, but he does get traded out. And once again, Florida, I mean, this time they get the first bloods, but bullies over towards A. Yep. And the opening on the flank is not there. That is tried and true, Florida. They have not mixed this up at all. And for good reason, I think they've won pretty much every single offensive round. Indeed, uh, final kill there. Cammy finds himself on the wrong side of the tracks. Dave Paddy lying in wait. Young rookie once again making his debut into the CDL. His first event for him has gone pretty well so far. I think he's won some fans. There's a lot of talk in the analyst desk, even backstage. Plays that we wouldn't expect to work. Dave somehow manages to make it happen. Here we go, though. Ultra on offense. Bomb in hand. Benjamin Bance will be our carrier. And forward we go into this rainy Berlin night. Spots two on the cross. You see the route Vivid's taking Bance to the exact same thing. It's the, the lack of information. So they only know where two players are. And the first blood awakening actually able to pull it off down low. And Dave Batty there for the follow-up. Already a two versus four. And that player able to get out with his life and awakening. He's got eyes on everybody. Florida again, full speed ahead. Big wake. Going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Kleenex. Insight comes to get the rescue, and that's a big kill. 2v3, Skies from behind finds one. Potential for the second, but he's gonna dip on out. Here comes the teamwork. Kleenex manages to get him in the end. 1v2 situation and Kleenex, oh boy, stay away from the light, my friend. He is hurt, tagged up with 45 left in the clock. Vivid and Dave Paddy, they're gonna get him. Good teamwork from the Mutineers. Cool resolve in what could have become a dicey situation. And just storming as well. And keep in mind, two and seven in first bloods yesterday on this map, and they still won in 6-3. Now they're two for two on first bloods, and obviously they have been converting. Back to the attack they go. And again, I think it's been literally every single time just towards this A site. There's been no need for them to mix it up. So if nothing else, I, I want to see some sort of a response from uh, Toronto, right? Maybe Bands tries to play the same angle, maybe a little bit more patient down low, or maybe to just be a 2-2 split. But Dave Patty, he's got the intel. He can call this out to his teammates. Or at least one. I like he's going to find it in Kleenex. That first blood once again. Three for three now in rounds. Bomb making its way slowly towards A. Got to keep an eye on Insight. He's the player a little bit closer. Bounce bursts through the doors. Doesn't check his corners once again. Dave Paddy. He just, he's in the corner every single life. He's managing to find these kills. And Vivid's going to leave it now all down to Kami. We will find at least one as the bomb gets planted. Just done. I mean, just suffocating. 
on Berlin. I don't know what Florida, I mean, maybe in scrims, literally have just never seen the B site, never even bothered to like mosey on over there. But if that's the case, that means every repetition they're getting, I, I mean, maybe the most well experienced team over towards A, but I mean, again, they have simply just looked unstoppable. Uh, a very comfortable game for these guys, three for three on, on the first bloods as well. I mean, Ultra, if you're struggling on defense against this squad, you need to make sure you pull off wins on offense to try to crawl back into this game. Keep in mind, Dave Patty, 5-0, and oh, sniffing at some score streaks. Yeah, Ben Bands, only three on the other side of the board. Dave, can we find number six? The answer is hell yeah. A nice first blood once again. Ultra oh, have man. been stunned round after round. Cami finally puts it to a close, but we do have that strafing run in the hands of Dave Patty for a future round. 1v2. Kami versus Vivid and Awakening. He does have the bomb and he is still close enough to the A-bomb site. What will Florida do to stop him? I, they've flipped the map. I, I mean, right, you got number eight, Awakening. He's got eyes over towards A. He's just going, he get, now you get the intel. Someone assuredly is going to be watching the cross if Kami tries to go back and it's going to be both. They know exactly where he is. He's looking for the child, but they've got both bomb sites covered. Now you don't even have to worry about B. You're happy to give up this plant because you can just trap him in Awakening should cover to make sure he doesn't cross. And you see Vivid is playing over towards the tracks. So they know they have Cami trapped around the A site. It's about how they approach it. You can take a little bit of time, 30 seconds on the clock. And Cami right in the corner. Awakening the first kill, but the timing's got to be great. Vivid looks to be stacking up behind him. Oh my gentle Jesus, the timing on this one. Cami wins the first. 20 seconds left, Vivid now on the hunt. And Cameron McGillian is going to make a run for it. He is going to fly now. And here we go, Vivid still hot on his tails, he's still making the play, and if you can find the kill in time, he should be able to get the defuse. Kami! Finally gets the kill. And finally gets Ultra on the board. 1v2 clutch, I, I mean, you will take it. By the way, very creative strat right from the get-go, right? They just triple hit up through mid, try to bully out fire, it didn't pan out, but Kami for the clutch, and again, he knew he was trapped, pick a corner, find the kills, maybe Tom had helped out a little bit, and funnily enough, it was the aggression he had after. Vivid is one of the fastest players in the league. Cammy just simply outran him. Did not waste any time. That is exactly what Ultra needs. Again, Florida, they have the bomb. They are going towards A. Ultra, they have to figure out a way to stop this. A technical 1v3 there for Cammy, but it's a 2-2 split. Two of them on A, two of them crossing over towards B and Kleenex. Trying to do a bit of uh, home renovation, changing the windows and doors of his abode here by the A-bomb site. And as you can see, the windows are gone and it's gonna be potentially a two-piece. The Great Dane, what an opening for Tobias Ewell Jonsson. Uh, just fantastic timing, whatever made him make that call. Oh, he maybe. is flying forward, he wants it, Vance wants it too. Maybe a little over aggressive, but you know where both players are. The last guy's trapped down low. Woo! Skies for the 1v3, but drop instantly. Ultra pounce, they deliver on defense. And Kleenex simply making it happen. Certainly knew the players were over towards the windows, right? You can hear him sort of poking it open. So Kleenex knew what the deal is, timed it out well. And then Ultra, I mean, again, just no time wasted at all. They were flying. They hit the go button so hard, <laughs> they flew in there. Kleenex almost managed to get three. And that player who managed to dip out by bottom tracks got away with his life. And nice turn from Skies there, great shots from him still. The comeback slowly but surely on. It's two rounds now in a row for Ultra. And a different look now here on offense. And this is Bully at the uh -oh. site. This is the quickest one. Someone's on the tank. You're looking for the Ooh. first. Bance takes him down. Now you got the opening. And you got the sniper in the back. The bomb doesn't get planted. Skies actually is able to take down two. I think he did it with what? The, the exploding barrels potentially. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, a two versus three. And Cammy's got the sniper. Maybe an opportunity for him to make the play, but. Not a fun situation to be forced into. Now, this has changed dramatically. What looked like quite a nice opening here for Ultras. Spun on his head. Inside does have eyes on. Cammy's oh, going to be the one to get it. Here comes the pressure. Dave Paddy from up top. Cammy's going to be able to get that bomb down, but waking in the flank. The timing's good. The battle now raging. A slight exchange there from Insight and Awakening. And here we go, Cammy, putting that sniper to work. That car 98K. What will he find here? And, ooh, there's one. Awakening. That's why we call him Big Wake. Oh, my word, Chance. A bloody hit marker. Awakening, what a beast. Dave finds the kills as well, and they get the defuse. I, I could have sworn the snipers were overpowered. I think that was a rumor, <laughs> but I mean, hey, just a, a little love tap right there. And I mean, just unfortunate as it could be. And hey, Awakening will take those. Man, is just simply built different, and that is uh, quite a way to win to win.
That round on defense. Sky's picking up the first two kills and now picking up some hand warmers. Something? Hand warmers? Something? We might have a. I don't think we have a tactical pause. But we're taking a brief moment here. As Cami completely unfazed by that hit marker. I'd have been raging personally, but here we go. Back at it. 4 2 now. As the Mutineers managed to steal a great round there. Chance, we're going through mid map, potentially going over towards B, and once again, Toronto Ultra with a tried and true 2 2 split. Uh, they might just try to bust that ice door. Cami's there, though. Cami's going to try to make the flag through now on the inside. The mail room's getting popping. All sorts of things being delivered. <laughs> Whoa, vivid. Straight to the grave. Awakening still holding the line. Manages to find one out of that one. So clean trades. 3v3 now. Still got that bomb on the inside of mail, but the B bomb site now has Bans to guard it. And I think Toronto Ultra just figured out where the actual pressure was going to be coming from because Cami left by himself. I mean, he was surrounded by two or three players. And you see the play call from Florida right. They've made noise over towards B. It's actually brought Insight back. But now the bomb being rotated. But keep in mind, Kleenex, he has been playing this corner the entire time. He is just playing to here once these players go for the plant. And they're making some noise. Question is, is how fast the Ultra rotate? They have wasted no time. Number one, Bance, he's already coming back. Nice little fake. Ooh. Nice little fake in they catch him. What a play. Skies gets two. Bance, the last one left. Bomb down Florida. Playing off the sound cues, taking it to Ultra. Skies, what a round. Just so simple stuff. I, I mean, just the fake plant. Kleenex takes the bait instantly. Skies there to watch over top. And we think the word is, is Skies cut his finger. Don't put a germ in. That's going to burn. Ooh, he's a badass. He put sanitizer on an open wound. Dad, his fingers are on fire. How do you cut your finger? He cut man? a finger. Is that a sharp controller? I mean, this is like, a, like an F1. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, family show. It's oh. Like Michael Jordan flu game. <laughs> <laughs> Not actually. Not my actually. guy. But he's, he's a warrior. He's back in it. What happened? We're going to uh, we're gonna have to find out exactly how the, the young warrior managed to cut himself here. But he's soldiering on with uh, what looks like quite a messy cut. Thumbs are up. Is the game going on right now? I, I think we, like should I, we, I, can, we can take a pause. We can. Oh, we're we are in, in a, we're in a okay. timeout. I'm seeing plenty of thumbs up, but damn, that's uh, that's something. Skies. That's <laughs> that, that is impressive, if nothing else. I don't know how you managed to cut yourself playing Call of Duty, but this guy's out here teaching. He's out here teaching indeed. And, and this is a, a very strange pause indeed for the rest of the squad, but that's a weird one for the ref to receive. I cut my finger. It's like the second time in Call of Duty history, potentially a player could actually identically say that, eh, blood, sweat, and tears, we poured blood. it in. <laughs> blood, sweat, and tears going into this one, quite literally. Right, back into the game we go. He's patched up. He's good to go. I, I mean, to be fair, he was bleeding. He's getting all the kills in the world, right? Yeah, he's got point, nine. Yeah. Past couple rounds, he's like putting in some serious work. Like, I don't know, take the bandaid off. Wait a little bit. Leaving more than a little bit of skin in the game. Do it again, by the way. Oh, let's go, baby. Skies on the four. Let's go, Skies! Almost managing to find another one. It doesn't matter how many fingers he might be missing right now. He's shooting fine, but it's a 2v1. Cami, this is for the map, Cami. Stay alive, son. As the saga may continue. Oh my god, oh my god, it's over. The Mutineers. The Skies, quite literally wounded, still manages to put on an incredible performance. He did definitely say, guys, we need to end this right now. I have to go deal with this. I'm just going to get a quick two-piece in mid-map, and we're going to see how this one goes. But that's the Search and Destroy in the books. And congratulations to the Mutineers. That was a, that was one hell of a performance. They continue to be the kings of Berlin. Yeah, Jen, I mean, dominance on Berlin, uh, I suppose, is actually the main theme. Again, I think one round on offense, they weren't able to convert. And they started making instant adjustments, right? They started playing much more towards the center of the map as soon as Ultra was making plays. And also a lot of very simple things they were doing, right? The bomb fakes just to bait out players like Kleenex to rack up the kills. But guys, the man of the game, 11 and 5, not too shabby at all. Decent amount of damage. And I think, honestly, it was like pre-bleed versus post-bleed. As soon as his fingers got cut. I mean, he went on an absolute tear. It's like adrenal spike, maybe. Got a little bit of, a little bit of extra juice flowing. Man, the man literally put hand sanitizer straight on that wound. So that little wince. What a titan. What a, what a juggernaut Skies is. But yeah, great stats all around from the players. Everyone did look a nice bit of work. Dave Paddy, those corners in the early rounds. He really played those angles right. Great reads there on the Toronto Ultra players. Not a bad work at all from the boys there. Look at the highlights. And it is mostly going to be the Mutineers.
And, and for good reason, again, the Mutineers made the appropriate adjustments. And Ultra did too, it was right on, on defense. They started to figure out what was going on over towards that A site. Ultra also showing a couple interesting looks on offense, trying to bully out over towards fire. But I think time and time again, Florida just prepared for it. And I think outside of the, the Cami 1v2, basically no mistakes that were made. So, I mean, credit to Cami for the actual plays. But again, Skies has to be the MVP, at least for that map number two. Nice little bounce back performance. And if nothing else, I think Florida just continued to prove how dangerous they actually are. Formidable squad. And again, very much considered lower in a lot of the power rankings coming into this one. So Florida continued to turn heads. And I'm just still wondering how he could have actually possibly cut himself. Tasking control will be coming up next as we go into this one all leveled at one to one. The first Kabutu hardpoint, not really close. Berlin search and destroy, not close at all. Maybe we'll get a tighter affair here on Tuscan. You know what it could have been? Marky B under a desk with a little scalpel or something, like a little razor blade, just like, get him. That no? doesn't say no. Marky B is a very nice guy. He's yeah, a lovely he's boy. But he'll anything to win. <laughs> <laughs> Tuscan coming up next. And we got Berlin Hardpoint as well. We do have to go there. But take a look at our top KDs today. This is already a big weight did the same from day one. This was him all frying all day long. Sky's there as well in fifth place. The Mutineers, I mean, their opponents, LAG, obviously didn't put up the biggest fight chance. That has to be said. And Not a fight at all. Well, so, come yes. on. Well, break this one down then, brother. Uh, I mean, Awakening Skies popped off. And it was right from the Bocage as well, right? That was the very first like bit of analysis that we had for Florida is all these ARs. How is that going to pan out? And another interesting, the second bit of analysis is how good is their communication going to be? And Dave Patty, I mean, he was putting in some serious work yesterday. I'm kind of interested in to see how they sound in the control once we get there. Oh, we'll get there very, very soon. We're going to patch Skies up, make sure he's all going to go into Tuscan, and we're going to take a very, very quick commercial break. When we come back, map number three. Don't go too far.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Game Fuel. Victory in a can. Friends, and welcome back to the Call of Duty League's kickoff classic brought to you by Zenny Gaming. Skies is all good to go. He managed to cause himself quite a blunder. He's cut his hand wide open, but he's now hot to trot. The medics have been on field. They've taken good care of him, and it certainly didn't slow him down in that last game on Berlin shots. Nah, I think it might have helped with the grip, to be perfectly honest with you. But Skies, obviously, the toughest player in the league. I by mean, far. how do you... No, it's not a big deal. It's just cut on your <laughs> finger. It's whatever. <laughs> I think you sold that quite well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's fine. He's all good, though. It doesn't look great, though. I will give him that. No, it's a tough-looking one, but uh, it hasn't slowed him down one bit as we come now into Tuscan control, and uh, so far, so good. The Mutineers bounce back after a difficult showing there on Gavutu. Skies, of course, he's a winner on map two, but then S&D, look at him. 9.55 and the damage goes on a five spree, 11 and five overall. And a good bounce back from the game number one as well, right? It probably had the, the worst performance on his team. Admittedly, it was just a tough one because of how well uh, that Ultra were playing on the Gavutu, but yeah, they're there. That's the resilience that you need from uh, the leader of this squad. And is he like towards like the, the veteran part of Call of Duty? It's like his fourth uh, year. Is that veteran these days? Getting there, you know. Four years. It used to be veteran. It used to take like two. Yeah, I mean, what, like the greatest veterans we've still got? I mean, it's the Crim Clay slash is 27. Oh, they're like 27 years. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah I mean, it's been a long time. Maps and Mozo, friends. Tuscan Control coming up next. Bullion Hardpoint. We're going to go back to that one. And of course, Desert Siege for game five. And the way things are shaping up so far, it's been a spicy day of Call of Duty. And I think that's putting it very, very very mildly. This could be a very fun one, but we do have to see exactly what happens on our next map, Game 3, Control. Chance, I said before, a, a hotly contested uh, topic, I think, safe to say, Control coming into Vanguard, but I'm not going to lie, man, this is a lot of fun to watch. And I will say, right, just to revisit the conversation we had, like, briefly earlier, every single round we have seen on both Gavutu and Tuscan have played out effectively the exact same way. If there's any team that may be able to break the mold, show off a little something extra, Ultra might have something cooking, or it'd be same old, same old. And honestly, on Tuscan, there is no reason to do anything different. Leave one player on A, try to milk it and get as many kills as possible, but that is a much better start on the defensive end. Florida winning a couple of those gunfights, and thanks Ultra. Just a bit of a tougher spot, man, so clean shots to at least take down Skies. Desperately trying to find that pressure, find that space to work with so they can get that capture on A. First section's gone. Decent shots, but not quite enough as Dave Paddy manages to find another kill there. Big Lake has been on the flank basically the entire round. You just have to turn around and find yourself in trouble. And here he comes, making his way forward, slowing down the pressure for there. But, whoa, that's it from Skies. The last member of Ultra cleaned up. The two segments already gone. And again, this is just for Florida operation, get as many kills as possible. If you can keep him on A, that's great, but I think A is going to have like a 98% capture rate. I don't know if you will honestly ever see a round where the team on offense isn't able to collect. And you see Bance, that is the right idea. Fly forward and maybe duke a couple players yeah. out. Has a couple players in front. Can't get the first, though. Vivid there to shut him down. Florida, now they've just returned to that bottom right corner of the map. Try to lock down Church. Try to make sure no one sneaks through. And maybe a little bit of pressure on Skies in the back as well. He's able to take down one. Still trying to maintain that pressure. We've seen some of the traps already here on Tusk, and they have been absolutely devastating, and it's already starting to play out. Oh, my God. Kleenex somehow manages to find three there, making it four overall. And Skies, your next son. Nice kills indeed, and the spawns are crazy right now, Chance. Oh, and they, no, Bance never actually saw them. They just spawned literally right next to yeah. Bance. It is very difficult to actually block spawns on Tusk and Control. Six. Shout out to Ooh. the squads, and Kleenex is basically the one-man wrecking crew. That is honestly somewhat of a, a, an unfortunate, I want to say wasted, but wasted. It's not the correct word, just unfortunate for Bance. He's on the back tank and he ends up getting shot in the side. And that makes it that much more difficult for Ultra to actually try to siege forward to try to find some sort of opening. And Kleenex. Also now trying to make his way back over towards B. The uh, offensive efforts have been decent so far. The kill's good for them. 13 lives for Toronto remain 12 for the Florida Mutineers. And we've slowed this one to a snail's pace. Bance managing to win the fight, Top Church. Now allowing the troops to fly on through, and here comes the pressure, awakening still with that top plat control. You've got to find those kills, and Ultra flooded through the backside of the map. The kills oh all gone their God. way. Oh, it is sublime from Toronto Ultra. Still going strong. They're on B. The first segment's nearly complete. And they've got all the cuts right. They got number one, Bance. He's sitting in the back of the map. Now you're actually forcing those spawns out. You basically just have to focus on Church in the alley. Can we go to pick up Church? There's one, there's two. You got the collection. Nearly two ticks have come Ooh. through. He can't get the third, but Bance is still here. He needs to slow this push down to buy his teammates time. Meanwhile, Skies nading his teammates. 
Vance can only get the one, but that buys at least insight time to get over towards that plat positioning. And obviously, eight versus two. I think Ultra have done enough. They've done enough, but crazier things have happened. Awakening, what have you got? We're not going to call this one over until it's over. Kami goes down. The clock has been stopped. The capture continues. Kleenex does push it all the way to Skies. Now Skies, lone man left. A lot of work to be done. The second segment of B is almost complete. Toronto have stacked the point. This should be their round, and it is. Ultra take the first just in an incredibly efficient fashion. I think, honestly, it was this setup, right? You saw Vance when he's coming in through side church. At some point, they had three players through church just flooding through the back alley, and that is where the chaos really starts. And I will say, I know a theme throughout Cold War uh, for controlling there was play or teams do not stack the point nearly enough. I think that's a situation where Vance is playing it perfectly, where you can't afford to stack it at least super quickly. You need a player to push all the way to the back to block the spawns, and I think Ultra certainly have the right idea, but go again, this time Florida's turn on the attack, and well enough, not a ton of pressure over towards A yet. Yeah, not yet. I think Ultra didn't do the greatest job in capturing oh, no. the river. Howdy, Kleenex. Oh my word, nice start from him. Once again, keeping the kills going. 14 and 8 so far from him. Still, that pressure mount to Kami, he's holding down that line of sight by A. He's got the backside completely covered. Sky's going forward, Vance is already in the flank, and this is poetry in motion for Ultra. The teamwork, the positioning right now is sensational. Over to B we go, though, for the Mutineers, Chance. And, and this could be a blessing in disguise, right? So much pressure actually forcing the spawns over towards Roof, so you might be able to get at least one tick of progression there. And if you turn this into a B-cap first, Florida, they will love to be in this situation. Something we have not seen before. Skies and Waking on the hill, and Vance for the moment, he's by himself. That's too Ticks gone. Holdra, they might have just handed this round to Florida. Shoes on the other foot, and they are kicking. Here we go. Bantz managing to get in there, draining the final segment, but that's it. A very shaky B defense right now for Toronto Ultra. Dave Paddy in the back lines, cleaned up. Over towards the front side we go, and A is already being captured. 43 seconds remaining on the clock. You get that one segment of B, you're all good, but you still have to finish your food over by A. And Kami, he's going to be the one leading the charge now for Ultra, trying to buy time for Bantz on the oh, flank, Bantz. and it's all going fine. Bantz has found himself too. Kami now pushing the other side. The pressure is on. Benjamin Bantz, it's three now in a row. The defense is all still good. Just lightning speed. They are happy to just send either Bantz or uh, Kleenex on these flanks, doing it quickly, and now you're just spawn killing the opponent. It's the same situation as before, though, where it opens up the bottom side of the map, and if you can capture B first, you're still feeling great. That is where the play is coming in from Florida, but this time Ultra so much quicker on the defensive side to flood this, but they need to win these gunfights. Kleenex has got to win a big one here. His teammates are here to back him up. Holding this one close. Less than 20 seconds left on the clock. Kami drops. It's all down to Kleenex in this position until the reinforcements can arrive. Insight, you've got to defend the B zone alone. 12.8 clock stopped. We are capturing B now. Newton is. There is life yet in these veins. Back over to A they go. Blessed with a close spawn. 11 seconds on the clock. Chance is not over yet. And this is so dangerous. By the way, Florida, they're just so heavily down on lives. I think Ultra, I mean, they just won this round off of the pace. They still have to make sure they take care of business, don't give anything away, and Kleenex there for the first. Now just three lives remaining, and I might have jinxed it. I said we're almost never gonna see A not get capped, or maybe they back off and give it away. So that uh. stat is still going to be safe. They do still capture A, but 12 versus two, Ultra. Maybe a bit risky to open up B like that, but they pick them apart and obliterate them on life count. The Mutineers, they made it look very interesting in terms of the way they played the capture zones. That early B hit worked out well after they were getting strangled at A, but the kills, man. Ultra slayed them out from start to finish. I, I mean, this is the, the type of round that I want to see Ultra play like again in the future, right? To see how maybe the meta develops on Tuscan, because that just seems so incredibly risky. Just to flood through, right? Like, I, I think it was Vance originally or Kleenex, whatever it was, push through the roof side to go all the way back through spawns. I think in my head, I'm thinking just go towards top broken, help out towards the middle, but I mean, they just played with the aggression and they got the dub, so maybe like the uh, Gabutu out here teaching potentially. Just back to A they go, and you see Florida not even interested in attempting to defend the A site. Oh my god, Kami's giving them two in the start. Kleenex is pushing them out, they're now trying to cut the players through mid. Damage is good, nades are in. He should be able to hit this flank, his teammates are helping out as well, so Florida. Forward they go, great job from Vivid. Nice, two P's, gonna get the defenders off just for the time being. You still gotta worry about Kleenex, and he is a menace here on Tuscan. That is he winning these gunfights. I mean, shout out side cancels, I suppose. Does not survive off the God Heady, but either way, uh, Ultra, I mean, just up in their face, constantly flanking, pouring the pressure on both offense and defense. Vance can't win that one, but even still, you will have plenty of time on the clock. Two minutes and eight seconds. 
to try to work to capture B. We'll see if Toronto has something up their sleeves. Obviously, last time around, they grouped up in church, cut through that mid alley. Might be trying to set something similar up once again. But they will be consistently spawning in the top left of the minimap. It is a hike and a half to try to get to this hill. Cammy, though, he found an opening. Oh, he shot. Shoot, shoot. Oh, Dave Panic made it work hard for that one, but the kill's good. Still have to worry about Awakening back on the B zone defense. Good shots out of Skies there with a the rat up close and personal now. Fortifying the position is going to be Florida. They still have to contend with this player behind it. It's Cami. Dave Paddy takes care of him. And that's a great job as well. I mean, they sent three players back just to make sure that Cami can cannot cause any chaos in their spawn. Now they got the map spread. Florida has stabilized. Admittedly, the arc talked a little bit deeper in their spawn, so it's not the worst situation from Ultra. Cami the first to make a move, but it is a stack oh. to try to come through. Platt, there is a trade, but now you just got to worry about the flanks as well. Dave Patty making a ton of noise. I think this is going to get red. It does. That's three down, two players for Ultra on the point. Oh, they're all over the point, swarming it now, hoping to find the stack, but Awakening's going to find one in the back line. Shots are good. Band stays alive, though. He's got himself two kills now. They're going to find the third. Can't get it done, but time is on their side. Cami now flooding in. There's the flank you need. You still have a player back tank there for Florida Mutineers, and on the point, completely wiped out. So no one's left now for the players of Toronto Ultra, except for Cami, they're on point. Uh, it's that life count, though. I think is the biggest thing. Again, Ultra pouring on the pressure. They have one good break. You might not actually to get able or able to get progression on B, but they get enough of the kills that that might be their route and path to win this round. Only up by four, though. And again, Florida able to turtle up. Nice little map spread. Couple shots in a player, but Awakening wants the, the map positioning. Oh, and he no. gets caught. Oh, he gets caught big time. Bans almost gets caught as well. We still have to worry about Vivid. He's fighting tooth and nail there on point. Skies from the back, keeps him covered. Eight to five now, less than 20 now to work with on the clock. As we are starting to run out of this one, still from that back side, it's gonna be Skies. He and Dave Paddy lining up with those ARs across the back line. As long as they keep this one safe, they could potentially win the round on time, but you still have to worry about the lives. 10 seconds chance, here we go. And they're so far away, they're trying to go through church once again. The X, he's gonna have to fly. No respawns remaining, but you gotta get to the point. Only two Whoa! seconds. Someone's Whoa! gotta get there. Kleenex is there. Whoa! The buys can do it. You stop the clock. You gotta win the gunfights. Can be delivered. The reinforcements in, in a 5v1. Kleenex, I mean, literally frame perfect to make sure he gets to the point. Wait! Someone stay on it. Vivid's still alive, he's gonna fly forward and go, oh my word! It was so close and I mean, we couldn't even see it. 0, .0 something something, as tight as you like there on the clock. Reese Vivid, that two piece was something special. If he timed that one right, if he won that gunfight, let me tell you. What a round that could have been. I, and what, it's just a, a play from Kleenex. I mean, yes, Vivid makes it interesting towards the end, and it got a little bit scary, but how do you even bully your way out to find three coming in through there? I mean, no time on the clock. You just have to fly in. He got a kill top church. They knew where he was coming from, but Kleenex simply popping off. I mean, led the entire lobby in damage by a decent margin, 33 kills. I mean, that map, he was simply just in a league of his own leading his team to that 3-0 victory. The tyrant of Tuscan Kleenex finds himself a sweet set of kills, 33 and 23 overall, and a nice win there. 3-0 in the end from Toronto Ultra. They got by one now in this series. They're on match point. If they win the billion hard point coming up in just a moment, the series is done. But this is going to be a big comeback now, a massive opportunity to turn things around and force that game five for the Florida Mutineers. The chance, the question is, for the banged up skies, and you've taken a close round like that, a bit of a whoop in there on Tuscan. Do they have the mental resolve to go all the way? Oh, I think they absolutely do have the mental resolve, right? especially in like uh, not the highest pressure of environments. I think the team will be just fine to try to get the bounce back. That being said, I mean, we're going into a hard point where at least for map number one, Ultra, their teamwork, again, as good as it could possibly be. Even on the control, it was a spicy final round, but you still get a 3-0. You get a couple or both round wins on offense. So Ultra maybe again just picking up from where they left off from last year. But take a look at some of these replays and I think that final round especially the play from Kleenex uh, will be something to watch. Our Tuscan highlights here and again watching those flanks those off the rip we see big wake basically one of those players that oh, as soon as the match starts he flies across on defense tries to get in behind those players force those spawns out and change them over towards BB he does a really nice job here all around the kills were pretty sweet and 
When it came down to a chance, it was just fantastic teamwork and brilliant map awareness from the boys at Ultra. I mean, is there anything else that really has to be said there? Well, I I completely missed the question. I apologize. But what I was thinking about at least in the meantime. It's all right, mate. It was just the idea that we've seen quite a few teams when they're on offense try to flank around through like the P1 side of the map and go all the way around and go to the back tank. It never seems like it's fun to have to take those gunfights in Toronto Ultra consistently. Their idea, cut through the middle of the map, go through a church, and then cut through the alley and try to hit the back through there. But well, the last 30 seconds of that control, I believe, just to show you the exact routes that Ultra was taking. And again, it is just cutting through the alley. Seemed, at least for Ultra, to be the play. Well, yeah, I mean, these final few moments, again, the clock's ticking down, the lives are starting to go as well, Chance. And it was, it was, I don't think it was actually Kleenex who managed to get himself on the point. It maybe was him who managed to get the slide just a few seconds after this one but that two-piece oh, seals geez. it slides right on in and it is actually cami cami dives on there a, s a fraction of a second obviously afterwards and this is where things get crazy and, and cami's gunfight win by the way huge after that just to get to the point vivid though makes it spicy they know he's in the back and i think insight just gets caught i think he might have accidentally jumped behind his teammate for the lineup but a massive one-on-one -on -one win there towards the end that is what kleenex's big three cami's big kills just to get on the point that is a three sets of plays and different players for Ultra that have to come up big just to deliver, but they did, so here we are. You're spinning plates in professional call of duty. There's a lot of things that you have to do very, very well, and a lot of things that can go wrong, and wow, we saw some madness there. Now we go to Berlin, though, Charles. We're going back to playing another hard point here for map number four. What do you think of this one, mate? I mean, have you got anything based on what we've seen? I know the data pool is very small. How are we thinking this one's going to go down? Uh, Ultra, I think, have just been too clean. There has been pretty much no answer for Kleenex, at least in game number one. There was an answer it, just from the teamwork from the Gavutu. In Berlin is a map that I think is almost sort of like the most traditional Call of Duty where you can actually orchestrate different things on different maps, where you can chain hills together back to back to back. And I think it's similar enough to Gavutu that I think Toronto Ultra definitely have the edge. That being said, I mean, it makes zero sense for actual analysis, but at least on Berlin for the map too. Florida won it, so obviously a Berlin team. Obviously the Berlin team. That's how that works. That's exactly how that works. Here we go though, map number four. This is do or die right now for the Florida Mutineers. They've got to push that game five. For Ultra, though, sitting pretty. They managed to win themselves a very good control map there. Interesting to see how this one goes down, man. It's like another one of those big maps. AR players go wild in this one. A lot of action we see in the up close personal spaces. The submachine gun players having a decent time as well. Who's going to be the carved player? Who's going to go big? Who's going to go wild? Let's find out. It, easy bets are definitely Cami and Kleenex. I, I mean, if there is any concerns about this team is in stage one. Uh, last year, they had a bit of a slow start. And by stage two, Bans had a oh, transformational experience to turn into a, a different player. So maybe you might need to rely on Cami and Kleenex earlier in the year. This time, though, they get the first couple seconds. Dave Patty responds, but it is a dog fight around this first hit. Not quite getting that window. Kleenex was desperately trying to do it. Not an easy thing to do, jump sideways in this game and manage to hit the mantle. Vivid, nice win through mid. Time ticking away though, you should see Florida Meteors take the lead, even if it's only for a brief spell. He's now trying to find the car. 20 seconds left in this first point, already thinking about new. We're going to go towards the mail room, sort of center side of the map. Small hard point, a lot of choked points, the windows, all sorts of stuff. That second balcony, you're going to see players fly off that all year long in Awakening. A nice set of kills for him. It's three with the potential for four, but Kleenex cuts him down. Uh, Dave Patty just won a massive gunfight on Bant. He does get traded, but the setup should be there for Vivid. Knows he should only be dealing with one play around the hill, but he actually plays it slow, which I'm not used to saying for Vivid, but at the very least, he's got his teammates here for the break. If the player tags up down low, Toronto Ultra, they are just swarming everywhere around this hill, but until either team wins a set of gunfights, you can't get inside. Vivid, by the way, he's picking up two with the pistol. Somebody kill his dog. Was he going full John Wick down there? What the hell just happened? 40 seconds now climbing for the Florida Mutineers. Kills are good. Insight has a lot of coverage here. He's managed to take care of that other side of the stairwell. Dave Paddy on the other side playing this one a lot slower. And he's truly a patient player. The little sample size we have of him has been working out. But Toronto Ultra clean out every possible avenue except for Awakening. Now from up high trying to stop the clock. Keeping those players off the point. A big weight gets it done. I think uh, number seven, Dave Fatty, he might have just gotten his own trades right there. Looks like he fell and spawned <laughs> right next to the player that just killed him. So that actually did big just for this rotation. Ultra not able to get anybody through. And Vivid pouring the pressure on the old hill. He's able to take down three. And that is just going to spawn them out once again at the old hill. I mean, he buys his team maybe an extra 10 seconds to get the setup that they want. And they've had this setup for quite some time. This is a money hill. Florida can deliver. They could potentially blow this game open early on and take a massive lead. 
They've had a can't find the kill. What? The trades, not even there. Tobias is on a tear. Absolutely. Rampage from Tobias. The Awakening trying to do what he can. Cammy with the trades. Cammy finds another one. Cammy. Oh, Cammy. Woohoo! What a three that was. Still not quite enough to get the hard point break. One player left up is going to provide those spawns still. But here, Calm Ultra flying in through that doorway. Eyes on those players at the backside. Phoenix is going to be there to find the first. Bance gets himself two. And that is a tough hit for the Mutineers. But they're still in the back. But, you know, that's actually great. Toronto Ultra be it, leave that spawn open to make sure that they stay far away. I think Ultra are calculating that, doing it on purpose, and making the rotation that much easier. Cammy, he knows he's got to flood all the way to the back there, still leaving that back spawn open. And for Florida, this is huge. You even catch the player on the rotation. That is as perfect as it can get. This is a hill that you can get a full 60. Florida had all the time in the world in the setup, and they get broken down. Ultra, you talk about responding when the pressure is poured on, but now they got to deliver and make sure they actually hold a hill as well. Insight, he's got that outer angle on lock. A lot of point, Fubar for Florida, but now over towards the train line. Cami. Trying to hold that front side down. He does have Phoenix behind him. The spawns are all still close. And here's the overhead view. You can see the angle that you can see Mutineers try to take here. Nades have out. The lethals have been thrown. The tacticals are there as well. And the kills are looking great from the Florida Mutineers. Phoenix, what are you going to do? You're going to find one. But the pressure's still mounting inside now. Trying to watch the players from the back. The lone defender for the time being. As Kami spawns close, you've still got a decent foothold here for Toronto Ultra. And the lead is now theirs. I mean, Toronto, I, it just looks like they're playing with a style where even when like you go three down, Kleenex is just playing his life so effectively. There's almost no wasted energy from this Ultra team and able to take the lead again after being put in a pretty dire situation. Now on the rotation, Bance is calling on his players and he's gonna leave him. He's going around back, he's going for the spawn flip. You wanna control this bottom side of the map potentially to think long term for P1. He's gonna be annoying inside fire. You see number two spawns up exactly where you want to be. Ultra consistently in hard point doing the right things. Doing the right thing, Benjamin Bance with the 200 IQ play. Vivid though, trying to bounce back. Let's have a listen now to the Florida Mutineers and see how they're going. Yeah, watch there's it, play next. Hello, oh, the Kleenex. Walk, 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 it could be out of here. Oh, Cammy and you. Oh, no, no, no. 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 Yeah, Marty, 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 guys. Out of door, push out, Right side hill, right side hill, one shot, one small. Yeah, connect, push out, push out. Right side hill, one shot, bands, he's been proning. 30 seconds, running. That's a nade, I got it. Oh, 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 Bans is in there. I got my fault. There's no one on ult. Bans is in there. Bans on you, one's on ult. Yeah, yeah. No, fire tick, fire tick. Take, take, take. Another one hit ult. Another one hit ult. Where's that? Clinics is long. Clinics is long. We're gonna cross. Yo, yo. D5, D5 inside. Who wants to take on me, guys? D5 inside. I killed him. I killed him. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Clinics should be mid. Cammy's D-back train. D-back train. See what you can. Chance to come from Emmy Gooding and two teams with fantastic communication, but Toronto Ultra are starting to pull this one away slowly but surely. What do you make of the comms? I, I thought the comms were uh, pretty solid. I thought a couple of rotational kills were solid, but then all of a sudden Toronto, I mean, they just get the white inside, able to pick up three. I mean, Dave Batty was putting in work on the rotation, he picked up at least two kills to try to open things up and it just all collapses almost instantaneously as soon as the hill is popped. Now though, Kleenex is by himself on the point. He gets cleared out, and now Florida could potentially start to pour some of this pressure on as Awakening able to pick up Whoa. two. Everybody gonna fall, and Florida finally able to open things up. And keep in mind, spawning on the left side of the map, similar situation to what we saw on the first set of rotations. We had Florida, they had that early rotation, but they got broken down. They need to be able to hold this next hill and try to keep the lead, or they just spawn out that quickly, and Ultra might take them over too fast oh. if it can't find that second kill. So close to that second kill. Bans and Co now. Ultra have got themselves the hard point. 
We make our way across. Lobby's now all there. It's Phoenix trying to cut through. Take care of these players on steps. His presence has been so great. Somehow explodes. Not quite sure how many killed there. Might have been a, a nade or a stun, but the in-game indicator didn't give us much to work with there. There's Awakening now up next. Halfway still taken away. Big kill from Awakening. The spawns though still close here from Toronto Ultra. They're going to look to try to flip them soon. Got to make their way across map at some point. But still, they're going to do a lot of damage here, Chance. Still 30 odd seconds to play with. And Bans already thinking about next, surely. Making sure those players coming in from that side of the map are all being handled too. Oh, he's just getting the clean up crew oh. right now. I mean, the last man standing. This is just so many hills back to back where Ultra is playing about as mistake free as it seems like we've seen any team be able to pull off in Vanguard. Not an easy feat at all, but. They are just simply wheeling and dealing what, an 80-point lead that they have here on this hard point. Florida, they have their work cut out for them, especially right now. Number six, Skies, he's the only guy towards new. Kleenex can't win his one, though. Vivid able to take him down, and that means the rotation is secure. So talk about a time where you absolutely need this full 60. It honestly feels like it's a Gavutu all over again. <laughs> we we'll cross over the 200 point mark now for Toronto Ultra. We're in the business end at this hard point. Clean extra from over the top. Managed to clean one up. Oh, oh my dear. word. How did that happen? Awakening's up next. And Kleenex, sorry, his ankles doesn't matter. Inside's got the kill. Ultra, a very decisive battle there. Won over by Train. That hard point's all theirs. 30 seconds left on this one. We're not going to quite see the victory, but they're going to get real close. I think Cammy almost looks bored. He's thinking he's expecting the pressure to come through. Meanwhile, Florida just so far away. His teammates picking him apart. Kleenex is built different, by the way. I mean, that is just back to back games where. He is absolutely having. Nice response by Florida to Ooh. fight for the scrap time, but this is just the, the Kleenex show right now. 33 at 24. I can't believe he lost that gunfight. It's <laughs> rare to see, it feels like, but Ultra have been one step ahead. That is four down, though, so they're not out of this yet, but they have such a long way to go. Potential for a full 60 here on the fifth hard point in the rotation. Not easy. Kleenex, though. He's back on his BS, finding them kills all over the place. 35 and 26 to him. He's looking great. Cami now picks up the pieces where exactly he fell. Nice awareness. Dave Paddy, though, with the big win there. The door doesn't quite help out Cami in that situation. Inside of the hill. Nice kill from him. They're starting to fly through now, and the things are getting a little bit too mixy, as you can see. 231. An open hard point. Toronto will be able to get a bit more time. And again, as much of this as they possibly can, it could be the win here. Could be the win indeed. Cut off man is Eric. Oh, come and on. And collecting the multi kills. He's going for the 40 bomb. That's what he's looking for before they get the win. But I'm looking at this as almost just an educational experience from Toronto. I mean, they really do just seem to be out here teaching. Really are. Bands on a five. He's trying to make something special happen here. Back over to the first hard point on third set. Insight's already in. He's posted up. He's looking to have a good time here. And as it flips open, the damage dealt. Dave Paddy, what have you got? Flying on through. Insight soaking this time up. There's one. The second on Awakening. The rat comes through. It's five seconds out for the win. The teamwork is there. That is it. Toronto Ultra. A brilliant showing there. The hard point on Berlin is Kleenex. The speed of Slipnia. He absolutely slayed his way across the map. A sensational performance from him as an individual. But teamwork truly prevailed. We say thank you. And we bid adieu to the Florida Mutineers. Hey, it's the guy from, it's the dude from uh, from Waffle House. What's up, bro? How you doing? What a game, though. Good stuff there once again from the Toronto Ultra players. 3 1 in the end. I, and they really did make it look easy. I, this is the team that I would be watching their VOD to study how to play the game, right? On the Tuscan control, they were on point on their offensive rounds, just that consistently hitting through the mid alley. Seemed to pay dividends, both the hard points. I mean, again, as good as it could possibly be. If they need the breaks, they got them. You think the money hills exist for Ultra? When they need a break, they don't. When they need to hold them, they absolutely do. And of course, when you need the slang, Kleenex provides. I mean, 68 engagements again, leading the lobby in slang leading the lobby in damage. And of course, inside again, the sponge, two minutes and 30 seconds in the hill. I mean, honestly, it's only been two maps, but he's been over five minutes just hanging out inside the hard point. Meow. What a bit of work he's done. 250 to 150 to close this one out. And they, uh, a nice Berlin hard point, man. I'm slowly starting to, I'm really enjoying watching that map. Like it's one of those maps we've got a lot of people talk about this one. It makes a lot of sense, you know, logically when it comes to the way Call of Duty is typically played. Uh, a great fun map to watch and highlights abound, friends. I mean, most of this is going to be the Kleenex show, let's face it. But we saw some wild and crazy things here today on Berlin as the series now comes to a close. And I mean, for me, I'm just going back to how tight that control game could have been that final round. That's what we love about the control game. That's what we love to see in those sort of 
of tight situations. I mean, it'd also be one of those things where the control game mode absolutely is going to develop. Even like Bocage Hardpoint, like the, the most talking points we've ever had for a single map, we've seen that map developed as well. I mean, we had Atlanta Phase earlier spending almost the majority of the game running a 2AR setup on theirs. Teams in the league running four SMGs, so we might see different teams with radically different approaches, but as far as this Berlin goes, Ultra certainly had the plays. I mean, it was what? Kleenex, obviously, the entire game just racking up multi-kills. Cami to break into that P3 earlier on. He's picking up three pieces to make it happen, and we needed Bantz to go on rotations to flip the spawns to be the cerebral guy on the team he was providing. And again, insight. Sat inside the hill. Yep. I mean, we think about Great breaking job. spawns in this game. You know, it, it's not an easy thing to do. A three-piece doesn't secure you anything. Timing might help their chance, but it's not an easy thing to do either way. And, and keep in mind, that was the hill where Cammy's picking up the three-piece, but they didn't even break the spawns. They no, wanted they them, them to the keep back. those back spawns. It is like manipulating, oh, we'll give you the, quote, good spawn and trap you in. Again, Ultra, a team that seemingly always is going to know this game down to a T. And again, they're just out here teaching. That's a very similar situation to like, do you remember um, Rumaza, like that back barbershop hard point? You, at one point, you basically want to trap him in the back and you yeah. just run across the map to the other side of the rugs and get that tower control. But hey, we're living in the past. Living in the future now though, friends. 3-1 there for Toronto Ultra. Great stuff out of them all round. Teamwork still prevailing. Florida Mutant is there, man. I mean, I had a lot of fun watching them. They gave it to LAG. I think they looked pretty solid in that matchup. There was a couple of moments, you know, defining moments. But I, I think ultimately, like the teamwork's looking good. I love hearing the comms out of them. One of the biggest issues they've had for the last season. Season. They sounded great in those listen-ins, and I think this is a very welcome, you know, team. I think this is going to be great for them. Enough of us, though, mate. We've got ourselves Guy Blaze on stage for our Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miles. Give it up for the Toronto Ultra, everybody. Oh, man, Kleenex. You know, after map number two, things look like they might get a little bit messy for you guys, but nothing that the Ultra could not overcome in maps three and four. How does it feel to be back on the CDL main stage? You know, it feels amazing to be back on the stage. I mean, our S&D wasn't looking too great, but it's a kickoff, so, you know, we're safe and some spice for the major one. So, you know, respawns went our way. I mean, expected. There you go. It is the kickoff, and you don't want to give away too much to kick this one off. Now, with that being said, in the teams that are in this tournament that are remaining, we only got a few left. Who are you looking forward to playing? I'd probably throw out Seattle in there, you know, they got a bunch of new players in the roster. They got Phoenix, my old Black Ops 4 coach, so, you know, looking forward to playing them. They look on form, so we'll see how that goes. All right, we will see how it goes. And, and speaking of them looking on form, I want to actually talk about you guys, all right? Because the same squad from the last season coming into a new game of COD, what's going to be different for the Toronto Ultra this season? You know, last year we lacked a lot of inconsistency. I mean, we had a lot of inconsistency going into every major. I mean. You know, just clearing up S&D and stuff like that. That's going to be the main target for this year. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, yeah. And you guys look like y'all cleaned up in that last series. And you got a few more to go. With that being said, it was good talking to you, man. Thank Give you. it up for the Toronto Ultra as we get this main stage reset again. Thank you. And that's the Game Fuel Victory Spotlight. Oh. Nameless. That was crazy, man. Watching Toronto Ultra pop off like that. Our other teamwork was great, man, but the play that we saw from Bans earlier was incredible. Yeah, Bans had a, a great play in the control, and that control, honestly, was just a dominant performance. That's yeah. kind of how they were last year, especially with Search and Destroy and Control, but, you know, Search and Destroy didn't look as hot. Control looked unbelievable. Like, right here, you know, you saw Florida try to make a risky play and go all the way over towards B. It doesn't quite work out, but Toronto, they're just able to react so well, and they're like, you know what? You don't get be here. Guess what? We're going to punish you we're going to go for that spawn trap. They're able to clean up these kills here. And then what you're going to see after this is Florida, they then go like, okay, now we have to get in. They all go over towards A and Bance just runs past the entire team, goes for the spawn trap and just waits and trust his teammates to get those kills. When he trusts his teammates to get those kills, he spawn traps them and the round is basically over and just a flurry of kills for Toronto. It's honestly unbelievable how much their teamwork has even gotten better from last year going into this one, Josiah. Yeah, man, I cannot wait to watch this team have a full year under their belt, right? Last year, obviously, having Zinni, and then they've dropped him for Insight. Now they have a whole entire year to kind of keep perfecting that teamwork, and uh, I just can't wait to watch them more as the season progresses. And while we're on you, Slack, man, so um, Big Daddy Kleenex almost dropped a 40 bomb. 
close out the last map. I mean, the guy was unstoppable. Yeah, like he said in that interview, ever since he's kind of entered the scene since Black Ops 4, he's been a fire SMG to watch, and he's super fast, super aggressive, and makes great plays, and he has bands to bounce off of him. Like I said, there's just so many amazing players on this roster, but just to talk about his series that he just had, I mean, it's incredible across the board, right? He's going to be a super fast SMG, like I was saying, who kind of just up in your grill. He plays like Simp and Abizi, super fun to watch, and uh, can't wait to see how they can progress over time. All right, Miles and Chance, I know you're still up there. I'm going to get your thoughts right now. Four of you years they're currently going home because it was single elimination right my question to both of you guys start with you chance i mean there's a lot to look forward to with this team man i'm loving awakening uh, i mean i think one of the biggest things is obviously we've seen from like day one they have a ton of slang power awakening skies prove that bar none I think they need to take this like ultra series as the educational experience and go back and look at the mini map and see exactly what was going wrong and potentially steal quite a few of the okay. ideas that Ultra was showing off. All right, Miles, yo, Toronto Ultra, they're, they're the real yo. deal, man. They are the real deal, and this Ooh. is the thing for me, Veli, man. Like, I, I'm not, I was never worried about Toronto Ultra coming this season. Like, I think one of the keys, and you talked about his name as well, is like when you get second place at champs, when you get that close to victory and it gets snatched away from you, like that is the fuel. And this is a team. For me that like season after season they've had something to prove every single time you know they've always had a chip on their shoulder not necessarily in the cabinet a couple of those but we'll see how it goes this year <laughs> but their chip on their shoulder is the thing that fuels them so much so i love to see a toronto ultra i want to see them mad i want to see them pissed off i want to see them go hard that's the year i want to see them have yes miles chance you guys are incredible thank you so much but for those of you at home and even those of you in the audience if you like free stuff this is for you. If you happen to link your Activision and YouTube accounts, you can earn exclusive in-game rewards for tuning in to the Kickoff Classic. So make sure you do that and go ahead and get some good loot. But coming up next, we actually have an amazing matchup. We're getting NYSL back on the main stage. But before we get into that, Ali, your prediction, you flipped it actually right before the I'm match. I'm having a terrible day. You, you texted your group chat, you was flexing, you was feeling I have, I'm <laughs> having a terrible day, but you know what? I am so happy I'm having a terrible day. The Seattle Surge match, I mean, you could feel the electricity from the crowd. And this match, I took a little bit of a gamble. I went a little bit with my heart here just because of the showing from Florida. And you know what? I still think later okay. on in the season, we're going to see a really solid team, more than expected, coming from them. From those comps, it just seems like they haven't gelled together yet. It feels like, you know, somebody's calling something out and like three of them are turning to answer that call out and then they're getting shot in the back from a player like Bance who likes to get behind enemy lines so I think later on in the season we'll see a lot more out of Florida but Toronto man they are just so good. They're looking good so we saw one purple team win and we might see yet another in the next series if they can overcome a couple of legends on the roster filled with some young blood. But ladies and gentlemen day two here at the CDL kickoff classic has been everyone's dream. The plays are crazy. The best of five yesterday with the Boston Breach heading into Atlanta phase losing today. Nobody expected it, but coming up next, Clay and Krim are gonna be on that main stage, and I can't wait. We'll see you guys soon for more CDL action.
The Call of Duty League is brought to you by Zenny Gaming. Armor your eyes with blocks, gaming glasses starting at $24 by visiting zenny.com forward slash CDL. Hell yeah, I'm ready. Are you? Of course I'm ready. Yeah, I'm ready too. <laughs> Let's, Let's go! go. Welcome back to the CDO and Analyst Desk. Excuse me, my name is Veli. You're rocking the mic with Slack, Nameless, and also Ali Cat. And um, I'm going to be honest, have any of you guys gone skydiving before? Because they're, they're wild. Yo, I ain't going skydiving ever. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'd never know I'd be the one where it goes wrong. So I know I'm not doing it. <laughs> right now, Ali, heading into this match right now, we're going to see NYSL take the main stage against the Minnesota Rocker. The first time we will see them in 2022. And coming up from yesterday, from what we've seen so far, NYSL, I mean, their ceiling is high, in my opinion. Absolutely, NYSL came out frying yesterday, and with their series, I think they only had like a couple of hiccups that really cost them the match. So I think coming into today, they'll definitely have fixed those little mess ups. As Clay said, he's aging like fine wine. I don't see why today should be any different. <laughs> Yo, nameless Minnesota Rocker man, heading into this this year, what are your expectations for this team, and what do you think they'll place? Yeah, you know, they had that crazy miracle tournament that they won last year. Uh, the thing about Minnesota is their hard point. Like, how is their respawn going to be? Because last year, their respawn was not that great. So, uh, for their hard point, I'm expecting them to fix it this year. It was a lot of pace issues that they had last year. So, uh, that's what I'm going to be paying attention to in this match. Yes, right. Nameless, New York Cellbinders had a close call against Boston. So, they'll need to bring the heat. And these game field keys to victory. Excuse me. I mean, Minnesota Rocker. But their keys to victory. Can Minnesota's veteran roster keep up with the new Subliner squad? Let's break down the game field keys of victory. Um, honestly, Attach needs to step it up in S&D. Across the board, I look at this roster on paper, and I'm like, dang, this is a really good S&D team. But he's the only one going negative, so maybe it's getting some unlucky timing. We'll see going if into Vanguard. He's a little bit different, and hard point is crucial. Getting that early first hard point in the series is a big momentum push for this team, and we've seen a lot of success surrounding them when they happen to do that. Like Nameless said, they need to work on their hard point and control. So hopefully they figured respawn out. All right, Slacked, who's going to be the player to watch on this team? Because I don't know about you, but I think Attached is nice. I think Attached is a nice man in SND, but I'm super excited to watch Standy this year. Last year, obviously, having the break into the CDL, he was performing top notch. People were saying he was arguably the rookie of the year. So I'm seeing to, I'm all eyes on him to see if he can uh, bring that same pressure and aggression that he was having in the SMG role this year. All right, and let's rewind a little bit now. Let's get back at it, right? New York Subliners had a game five against Boston. Mm -hmm. Things were looking a little bit shaky. So when it comes to their game fuel keys of victory, what do you want to see? I mean, look at that Krim to keep it up, dude. This guy was a monster <laughs> yesterday. He had a 1.26. Like, Krim6 is back. He's no longer C6. He's Krim6. That was the one who was winning all those championships. So, obviously, he's got to keep on slaying. It just makes it easier for everybody on the roster. And then play fast and aggressive against a slow, methodical rocker. I mean, it's no secret. The rocker team can be a little bit slower when it comes to the hard points. And this New York team was built to be yeah. speed demons. With Neptune and Hydra, these guys should be able to just run out and have their way. So, that is what I'm looking at for these guys for their game field keys to victory. And after a big win yesterday, the team was full of smiles and vibes. We have Krim6 messing around, having a good time. Time. I mean, they're they're lighthearted, man. They're having fun with this event, right? Yeah, man. They've obviously been having a blast. And Grim Six <laughs> again. We saw this video earlier. This guy is an absolute clown, man. <laughs> I'm know. excited to see him take the main stage again. You know he planned that the night before. You oh, know he was laying in bed awake at night, like, oh, I can't wait to do TJ dirty tomorrow. And as you can see it here. The best oh. part was that they were telling him to like come back. They're like, yo, Grim, what are you doing? <laughs> he turns around and he goes, eh, I don't care what y'all say. Right. So in this so matchup right here. 
Minnesota Rockers, man, do you think they're going to pull out their first win of the year against the New York Subliners? So this matchup is super interesting for me. You got like two middle of the pack teams, in my personal opinion. I think that like either way, like just whoever comes out hot in this matchup is obviously going to take it. But I don't know. It's just single elimination. If Minnesota can come out strong in those respawns, I'm excited to see what they can do. All right, Allie, don't flip-flop your predictions for this one. No, I'm not. In your heart, who's taking this game? New York. New York? Yeah, right. I can't. I'm mind-blown, so I could have called them middle of the pack, dude. You <laughs> might have to go in the ring against Krim after that <laughs> statement. Uh, anyway, so. There's a reason why we put him on the desk, right? I'm playing your goat. I'm sorry about that. Yo, nameless, who's winning this game? Uh, New York 3-1. New York 3-1. I, I think the hard point woes are going to continue. I've watched a fair bit of Minnesota scrims, and their hard point still seems to be like it was last year. So okay. go up there and prove me wrong. As a longtime fan of Black Ops 2, I'm going to say it now. Clay and Krim, I love him forever. I'm rocking with NYSL as well. 3-1, but it's not just going to be up to us. I'm going to get Lando and Steady in the mix. Fellas, what's your predictions, man? Steady, I want you to give me something good. Honestly, I think this is going to be a great match between both of these teams. We haven't seen Minnesota play, but what we got yesterday was a nice little small sample size of what NYSL can be. Krim was playing at an unbelievable level. Obviously, Neptune and Hydra were really setting the pace when it came to that control. But their search and destroy, like their mid-game adjustments is what really took them over the edge. They were able to dominate that game 5-6-1, and six, one, made it look easy. And I feel like this series is going to come down to the search and destroys. Hey, Lando, what's your notes say about this one? Uh, let's see. Let's, see, uh, let's check here. What, what, the, what does the book say? It looks like... Uh Chapter 2, New York 3-2. That's, oh, right. that's, uh, that's what the book says. You can't disagree with it. But no, I, I agree with Jay. I think this, uh, I think this has the ability to, to go all the way to 5. I am really curious to see uh, you know, if the Rocker have made those adjustments in Hardpoint specifically. I know Ant touched on it just now. You know, Not great at Hardpoint last year. If they can adjust uh, you know, coming into Vanguard, that could be a great opportunity mm. for them. All right, Nameless, who's going to be the player to watch on NYSL in this matchup today? I think we're going to see a big game out of Neptune. He was really inconsistent yesterday, which is, you know, that could be something that is very bad for New York going through the rest of the season. Uh, I think he recognized that, so today I'm expecting him to have a big series. All right, Ali, if you were to put this matchup in, to describe it in a way characteristically, I mean, what are we here to expect? Something big, right? Honestly, I think we expect right off the back New York to kind of take the pace. This is a much a fast, aggressive team, and we've seen Rocker before. They like to play back. They're a very slow team, so I think if New York comes out swinging and takes the pace, it could get really scary early. On. All right, now let's talk about Clayster Slag. You've been in a ring with him so many times, man, more than you could count. I mean, what makes him special from a viewer standpoint? I mean, a player standpoint, sorry. Um, I think he's just a really, really good leader for these guys, right? Like we were talking about in the 2020 year, him and Krim, when they got together, they took those rookies, they kind of wingmanned them and kind of taught them the just fundamentals of Call of Duty. I'm expecting him to do the same thing this year. Obviously, it's super early on in the kickoff classic. We've seen a little bit of Neptune and Hydra. We've seen Krim 6 fry. But uh, over time, throughout the year, through the progression, I'm excited to see Neptune and Hydra kind of uh, just egg Excel. Yeah, I mean, just yeah. Excel. exactly. Like That's this the word could I was be, looking for. Yeah, this could be a really big year for Clayster because of the way this game is. Like the automaton, you can be really aggressive with it, and Clayster likes to get in the mix, dude. Like he's not like the statue AR player. He pushes up. He plays pretty aggressive. Um, so I'm expecting him to individually play well throughout this year. Last year we saw it in the beginning of Cold War. Like Clay was dominating. He was like top five KD in respawn. The guy was lighting it up. So. I mean, he's still got some gas in the tank. I don't know how, but he does. <laughs> I, I love it. I mean, the, the man has one. such a high motor. We started the clutch yesterday to 1v2, right? Put yeah. the snipe in the sand. Forget the GA, baby. But, ladies and gentlemen, before we jump into the match between the Minnesota Rocker and NYSL, we're going to send you over to a short break. But when we come back, get ready for a bang of a matchup. We'll catch you for some more CDO kickoff classic action soon. <laughs> 